let's stand and join together in singing, Blessed Be Your Name.
Amen. Thank you. We are glad to have you here this morning as we gather for worship on this Sunday before being with us in person to take the tear-off section of your bulletin, complete that, and drop it in the offering plate so that we can know who is worshiping with us this morning. If you're watching us online, we'd love for you to leave us a comment, maybe share it on your page so that others can worship with you and gather to hear the word of God with you this morning. But um, we are glad that you have chosen to worship with us. We hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving week. Speaking of the week ahead, there are several announcements that I'd like to draw your attention to. Um, you'll find all of our announcements on the back of your bulletin. Um, today will be the um, last day that you'll have the baskets out for the estimate of giving cards and the opportunities for ministry brochures, so you can turn those in today. If you miss it today, you can send those to us in the mail or drop it by uh, at your convenience, which, whatever is most convenient for you. We do have special, several special things that are coming up for Advent, which begins next Sunday. The um, Advent Bible study, the scripture sing of Christmas, will be uh, at, on Mondays. Um, it will be two sessions, one at 11 a.m. or another at 6. I believe I've had about 20 folks that have signed up for that, and so you're welcome to join us for that. I do have a Lacchaeus will come and speak to us next Sunday. So invite someone to join you, to, to come with you for that as we be, celebrate Christmas as we celebrate Advent and prepare our hearts and lives for Jesus to be born again in us. Speaking of inviting someone, you will find outside um, where the bulletins are and a few other places some new Advent cards, um, invite cards for you to pick up and to, to invite your friends and family to come to church with you. It's got some of the, our special events this Advent season, including the Choral Cantata, which will be December 18th, the candlelight communion service, um, and then we will have service on Christmas Day as well as New Year's Day this year since they fall on a Sunday. That will be at 10 a.m. on the 25th and January 1, no Sunday school that day. So note that on your calendar while you're planning your holiday season. So um, that's several of the things that are coming up in the life of our church. Um, we will be, the Advent wreath will be out next week. The Christmon tree will be up and we will be decorating and we will be in the full spirit of the season beginning next Sunday. We'd love for you to join us. It's a great time to invite someone to church. People are already thinking about Christmas and the reason for Christmas. And so we hope that you'll invite someone to come and join you for these special services and events coming up over the next several weeks. Are there other announcements that we need to mention this morning? Okay. I'd like to invite you then to um, take your bulletin and turn with me to our opening prayer. Um, as we, uh, You'll also see it on your screen. Today is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday in the Christian year. We start a new hymn. Make us loyal followers of our living Lord, that we may always hear his word, follow his teachings, and live in his spirit. And hasten the day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord, to your eternal glory. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you to please stand and join with me as we affirm our faith together using the affirmation from Romans chapter 8. You'll find it on your screen or in page 887 in your hymnal. I'll start and then invite you to join with me. And now who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
may be seated as our ushers come to receive our offering today as we remember to give thanks to God for all of his sins, maybe to remember the season when we give thanks to you for all your blessings, especially prepare our hearts and lives for the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, as we approach Advent and Christmas. And so, Lord, as we think of all of our blessings, as we count our many blessings, as the old hymn says, Lord, we are so grateful that you have been so good to us. And now, Lord, as we give you back a portion of what you've given us, we ask your blessings on these gifts that we give, that others might know the good news of Jesus Christ through them. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. remain standing as we join together in singing Now Thank We All Our God, hymn number 102. prayer in our service, we do remember all the many blessings that we are thankful for in this season. I, the old hymn says, count your many blessings, count them one by one, and I do think that that would be a good practice for us this week to take some time to think of our, all of our blessings and of how God has blessed us along the way. 
We also remember so many that are in need. We do continue to pray for peace for our world as we woke up to. Peterson is uh, spending the weekend in the hospital, unfortunately, so we want to pray for her and quick recovery for her. And um, one of our youth, Nick Latrice, is scheduled to go to New Orleans this week for a procedure, and he will be down there several weeks as the plan I heard last. So we want to remember Nick as he goes to New Orleans for that procedure. So we have um, many things to pray for as well as many things to give thanks for. Are there others that you'd like to mention this morning, other folks who are in need of our prayers? Pat Hinton. Okay. Others this morning. Okay. I'd like to invite you um, to join with me in prayer as we um, go to God this morning. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for your many blessings. And this season of thanksgiving, we ask that you would forgive us when we forget to count all of our blessings, when we forget to say thank you for all that you have done. And so, Lord, as we hear your word from the book of Luke today, we pray that you would help us to be like Jesus, to be one who for which others can give thanks, to take time out of our schedule to make a difference in the lives of others. Lord, we pray that you would forgive us when we are like the lepers who forgot to to give thanks and forgot to come back and tell Jesus how much they appreciated what he had done for them. Lord, we, we know that like them, it is all too easy for us to take our blessings for granted, and we pray that you would forgive us when we forget to say thank you. Instead, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be like the one who came back and gave thanks for what you have done for him. Lord, as we think about all that you've done for us, we pray that you would help us fill our hearts with thanksgiving. Help us to know your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your forgiveness. Lord, as we gather on this day, we we do think about our blessings, but we also think about so many needs that are all around us. We do pray for our world, for peace in our world. And Lord, we, we pray for those who have suffered um, from violence. And we ask your uh, presence to be with them. Lord, we also remember so many in our congregation and so many in our families that are sick. Maybe, hopefully, just under the weather with something temporary. But, Lord, for others that are in the hospital, for others that are recovering from surgery, Lord, we lift them up to you and we pray that your healing touch would be upon them. And, Lord, we pray in this holiday season, we especially remember all of those who will have empty spots around their holiday tables who, who's, um, who are missing someone this Thanksgiving season. And we pray your comfort and peace to be upon all of those that they would know your presence with them even in such a difficult and different time. And so, Lord, as we gather in your house, we lift all of these up to you. Maybe there are things we didn't mention. Maybe it's about something at work or at school or with friends or family. But, Lord, whatever it is, we are so grateful that you love us, you care for us, you have blessed us. And, Lord, most of all, you hear us when we pray. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would the children come down for the children's sermon? Well, I'm glad that you guys came down and sat with me this morning. So I appreciate you coming down. Are you looking forward to a week out of school? 
Yeah, I've got, we are too at, at my house, so that's a good thing, that's a good thing. Well, I brought something with me today, do you know what that is? What is that? It's a thank you card. Do you ever have to write thank you cards? It's kind of a lost art now. Um, when I was a kid, if whenever my whenever we received something as a gift, the next thing that we had to do was to sit down and write a thank you card, right? So, you know, it's still good to say thank you, and that's important because today we have lots to be thankful for. During this season, we are especially remind, reminded of that we should stop and give thanks, right? We have lots of good things to be thankful for. And we are especially thankful for those who help us and who do good things for us because that's what happened in our scripture today. I'm going to be reading out of the Gospel of Luke a little bit later. And Jesus is going between two countries and a group of lepers cry out to him and they say, Jesus, have mercy on us. Do you know what a leper is? It's not a word we use a lot to this day, right? A leper was someone who had a skin disease, but a lot of times they would have boils that grew up on their face and on their arms, and they began to lose feeling in their toes and in their fingers. Does that sound like a lot of fun? No. In fact, it got to be so bad and, and people were so scared of them that they often had to leave their homes and they lived outside the city, and which is why they cried out to Jesus for help. So what do you think Jesus did? Do you think he helped them? Yeah. He healed them, right? He said, go and show yourself to the priest that you're healed and then you can resume normal life. So uh, there were 10 lepers healed. How many do you think wrote Jesus a thank you note? One. Only one. Now, I'm not much of a mathematician, but that is only 10% of all the lepers that were healed that said, God, we are so grateful for what you have done for us. You see, if we're not careful that we can take for granted all that God has done for us, all that God has given, and, and I don't think that they intended to, to not be thankful. I just think they forgot, and maybe they got busy, and, and, and they were so excited to see their family and resume their normal lives, but we need to remember to say thanks. And that's why Thanksgiving is so important, because it's one day a year, one time during the year when we're reminded, hey, let's stop for a few moments and remember and give thanks for all that God has done for us. And so the next time you write a thank you card, or maybe even the next time someone does something nice for you and you say thank you, that's what my mom taught me, that those were magic words, right? That please and thank you and, and you're welcome and all those kinds of things that we learn when we're little bitty, that those kinds of things are still things that we can use even when we're old, right? So, you know, the next time someone does something nice for us and we say thank you, let's say thank you to God also for all of his many blessings to us. And I hope that you have a great Thanksgiving, but that you also take some time and enjoy your week off of school and all that kind of jazz, but also take some time to remember to say thank you to all those who help us, to all those who are there for us, but most especially to God for all that God has done for us. So let's pray together. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for your many blessings. In this season, we are especially thankful for friends and family, for those who help us and so many other people along the way. And Lord, we pray that you would forgive us when we forget to say thank you. Instead, Lord, we pray that you would help us to take some time and to remember all the good things that you've done for us and to remember to say thank you to all those who help us. Lord, most of all, we say thank you to you for your love, your care, your grace, and your forgiveness. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you very much, fellas. I hope you all have a good week and a happy Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much of that turkey. Thank you.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Well, today we are going to wrap up our short series on Give Thanks, and next week we'll move fully into Advent. My scripture reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And so I invite you to hear the word of the Lord from the book, the Gospel of Luke, um, this morning. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Rudyard Kipling lived from 1865 to 1936. He was English, yet born in Bombay, India. He wrote poetry and was the well-known author of books like Captain Courageous, How the Leopard Got His Spots, and we are still talking about the Jungle Book to this day. Kipling's writings not only made him famous, but also brought him a fortune. A newspaper reporter came up to him once and said, Mr. Kipling, I just read that somebody calculated that the money you make from your writings amounts to over $100 a word. So the reporter, he reached into his pocket and he pulled out a $100 bill and he gave it to Kipling and said, Here's a $100 bill, Mr. Kipling. Now give me one of your $100 words. Rudyard Kipling looked at the bill, put it in his pocket, and replied, Thanks. The word thanks should certainly be a $100 word for Kipling and for us. It's a small word, but it has powerful meaning. And so as we approach Thanksgiving Day, I want us to take a closer look at three types of characters in this story from Luke chapter 17 and what they can teach us about Thanksgiving. The first character we see is Jesus, who is the one who gave. We see Jesus, who is the one who gave. Now, Luke, the Gospel of Luke tells us that Jesus stops in a village near, on, kind of in the border between Galilee and Samaria on his way to Jerusalem. Now, this is about as close as it gets to no man's land. That this, this border area was probably claimed by neither country and probably was a place where the outcasts hang out, which is one of the reasons that the lepers could have been there. It's not Galilee. It's not Samaria. It's in between. Jesus was no stranger to this area. He had a reputation here. He had been here before that the people knew who he was and they knew what he could do. And so as Jesus is walking along in this borderland, there he runs across ten lepers who desperately need his help. Jesus' reputation as a compassionate teacher and healer had preceded him and as he was going into this unnamed village, the lepers cried out for Jesus to have pity on them. Now, I want you to notice in Luke that this encounter seems unplanned. If you had looked at Jesus' agenda, his to-do list for that day, it appears that heal ten lepers would not have been on it. And yet, when, G when they asked Jesus to have pity on them, when they asked Jesus to help them, he sets his agenda aside, and he heals every single one of them. 
You see, Jesus plays an important role in the Thanksgiving lesson of this Bible story. That Jesus is the one who gave. Jesus is the one who took time to help and to heal. And, and to heal. Jesus is the one who changed his plans in response to a simple request for help. A simple request for pity and for compassion. You see, giving thanks would be impossible if someone did not give in the first place. Of course, we know that that is God who gave to us so that we in turn might give to others. One of the interesting things about the story to me is that the men didn't ask to be healed. That they didn't say, Jesus, would you heal us? Would you make all of the leprosy go away? They simply asked for Jesus to do something. To have pity, to have compassion, to see them for who they were. Maybe these men were hoping that Jesus would give them a handout. Jesus could have done that very easily, that he could have looked over at Judas and who had the, the purse and the finances and said, Hey, Judas, give these men some money so that they can call DoorDash to deliver a log cabin to them for lunch. Or he could have said to Peter, Hey, Peter, why don't you run up to Rolling Hills and get some clothes for these guys? They obviously need our help. But here's the great thing about Jesus is that Jesus doesn't just take care of our superficial needs. Jesus doesn't just meet our physical needs. He goes right to the heart of the matter. He knew that they needed food. He knew that they needed clothes. But what they really needed was healing and help. Jesus provides for our deepest needs. Jesus sees beyond the superficial to know what is really going on in our hearts and lives. Jesus gave them more than food or clothes. Jesus gave them healing and hope. I heard about a medical missionary who served for many years in India. And in the region where he served, there was a disease that caused progressive blindness. That the people were often born with healthy vision, but there was something in that area that as they aged, the people would lose their sight. But this missionary had developed a process that could stop this progressive blindness. So people came to him and he performed a relatively simple operation and they would leave realizing that but for him they would have become blind. Now they would be able to see for the rest of their lives. The missionary said that, that those people never said thank you because they didn't have that phrase in their dialect. Instead, they spoke a word that meant, I will tell your name. And so wherever they went, they would tell the name of the missionary who had cured their blindness, the missionary who had helped them, the missionary who had given them hope. They had received something so wonderful that they couldn't help but tell the name of the one who helped them, the one who gave. What about you and I? That we are here this morning because we have received the love, the mercy, and the grace, and the forgiveness of Jesus. Have we shared the name of Jesus? Have we shared the good news? If we have not done so, are we truly thankful for what God has given us? So first, we see Jesus the one who gave. Secondly, the second group we see are the lepers who were healed and left but forgot to give thanks. The lepers who were healed but forgot to give thanks. Now, now before Jesus came upon these men, life was rough. Leprosy was a dreaded disease that slowly destroyed a person's body. Now, we don't know and we don't talk a lot about leprosy today because thankfully in the U.S. it is almost extinct. But leprosy is a disease of the nervous system. It causes nerves to lose their sensitivity. You can't feel heat, so burns were often the result of leprosy. You can't feel pain. Eventually, 
fingers and even toes would literally fall off of the body. In extreme cases, people would lose their ears and their nose and would become terribly disfigured. Now, here in America, leprosy has mostly been wiped out, though every once in a while we hear of a case uh, of leprosy. It is still carried by armadillos and some other creatures in our country. But in many third world countries today, many developing countries, leprosy can still be a major medical problem. In fact, here in Louisiana, we had the last lepers colony down in St. Gabriel for many, many years, and that has only closed in about the last 15 to 20 years. In the Bible, leprosy is one of the most feared illnesses. The term leprosy is used in the Bible refers to a wide variety of infectious skin rashes, scales, sores, or eruptions, not just clinical leprosy or Hansen's disease as we often know it today. So when Jesus is walking in this border country, the, the Bible tells us that these lepers, that they stood at a distance and they called out to Jesus to have pity on them. They had to stand at a distance from Jesus because they were not allowed to come near anybody so that others might not catch the disease. By law, they had to keep a distance of a minimum of six feet from other people, including their own family members. Can you imagine having to stay six feet away from everyone? Try that at your Thanksgiving table this week. Can you imagine not being able to touch or to hug or to kiss those whom you love? Furthermore, lepers were not allowed to live within the walls of any city. So they often live in caves or encampments outside of the city. If you've ever seen the old movie Ben-Hur, then you might remember that Ben-Hur's sister and mother develop leprosy and they have to live in a cave and they bring food to them. And that's the way that it was in Jesus' day. But maybe the worst sentence of leprosy was that lepers were considered unclean and therefore could not enter the temple. The temple, remember, was the center of religious life. It was the place where God dwelled. It was the place where the priest made sacrifices for sins. So lepers were cut off from friends family, and even faith. And maybe that's why these lepers were living in this no man's land, this border community between Galilee and Samaria, that they had been cast out and completely avoided by everyone, and they survived by asking others for help through begging. That lepers would often come together in their own communities trying to eke out a meager existence despite their disease. So you can imagine their excitement when they are healed and Jesus says, go show yourself to the priest so that he can certify that you have been healed. The priests were the only ones who could say that the lepers were now healed. You can imagine how their lives changed just like that, just because Jesus spoke the word and they were healed. And you can almost imagine their excitement and their joy. But they forgot to say thanks. And so this is the second, second group of people. We saw first those who do the giving, then, then here we see those who receive and forget to say thank you for the gift. Remember as a kid when you received your Christmas gifts on Christmas morning and and you were so excited to open them and to see what was in it and your parents had to say, oh yeah, remember to say thank you to all who gave you the gifts. We were so excited that even with good intentions, we often forget to say thank you. You see, these, these men, they had been living alone. They'd been watching their bodies just... Um, just go away and and all of a sudden they began to get feeling back and fingers and toes that the sores on their faces were healing and they could go back to their families and to their jobs, to their communities. They must have been thrilled. 
but they forgot to say thank you. Maybe, maybe because of their excitement, maybe because they were so ready to get back home, whatever it was, they forgot. 90% of them forgot to give thanks. I read this a long time ago, and I've had it in my files for many years. And it, this, this person asked the question, why did only one cleansed leper return to give thanks to Jesus? The following are nine suggested reasons why the other nine did not return. One waited to see if the cure was real. One waited to see if it would last. One said, well, I'll see Jesus later. Another decided, well, I really wasn't that sick in the first place. Another said, well, I was getting better. I would have gotten well eventually. One gave glory to the priests. One said, well, Jesus, all he did was speak the word. He really didn't do anything. Another said, any old rabbi could have done it. One said, I was already much improved. So the second group we see in this story are the lepers who were healed but forgot to say thank you. The last group we see is represented by the one leper, the grateful leper, the uncommonly thankful leper who came back to say thank you. And, and it's interesting that the Bible doesn't tell us why he came back. It just tells us that this one leper, that he returned to give thanks to Jesus that he returned praising God and he fell at Jesus' feet to say thank you for what he had done. So this third group is those, those who receive and express their gratitude who remember to say thank you. By the way, did you notice what Jesus called him when he came back? He said, well, where are the other nine is the only one that came back this foreigner. You may remember that Samaritans and Jews were not friends. Typically, the Jews thought of the Samaritans at best as half-breeds, and they would often avoid their territory going around it rather than going through it. See, this half-breed, he is the one who is thankful. And, but the greatest cause to separate the Samaritan was, was not his, his race, not his ethnicity, but what, was, what mostly separated him was his uncommon thankfulness to Jesus. He was so excited that he simply had to go back to Jesus and say thank you. It was the thankfulness of the Samaritan that set him apart from the other nine, not necessarily his ethnicity, not necessarily his race, but his attitude, his thankfulness made the difference. So why should we join the grateful leper in giving uncommon thanksgiving to God? Because if you have food in your refrigerator, if you have clothes on your back, a roof overhead and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of people in the world. If you have money in the bank, in your wallet, and spare change in a dish somewhere, you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you are more blessed than the millions who will not survive the week. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pangs of starvation, you are ahead of 500 million people in the world. If you can attend church meetings without fear of harassment, arrest, torture, or death, you are more blessed than 3 billion people in the world today. We are so blessed. We should be so thankful. There is a story of a Persian king who was elevated from a poverty-stricken home to the glory of the royal throne for his country. And when he became king, he sent his servants back to the old shack where he grew up with order, orders to gather every relic that was left there. They brought fragments of his home, many broken toys, an old, torn, and tattered shirt, a crude wooden bowl from which he ate. All of these he arranged in a special room in his palace. And each day he spent one whole hour 
sitting among the memories of his humble past. On the wall he hung a plaque, lest I forget. You see, thanksgiving is encouraged throughout the Bible. It is important, it is so important that the Bible says it should be something that we pay attention to. When we think of all that God has done for us, when we think of all the good blessings that we have received, how can we not say thank you? Thanksgiving becomes an important spiritual discipline. Lest we forget, let us say thanks. If anyone has a reason to give uncommon thanksgiving, it simply must be you and I. Francie Swartz, in her book, Chicken Soup for the Soul at Work, tells about a guy named Jerry. Jerry was always in a good mood and always had something positive to say. If you asked Jerry how he was doing, he would always say, if I was any better, I'd be twins. Well, Jerry was a restaurant manager who everybody loved to work with because he was so positive. And Francie said, I don't get it, Jerry. How can you possibly be upbeat all the time? How do you do it? Jerry said, every morning I wake up and I say to myself, Jerry, you have two choices today. You can either choose to be in a bad mood or choose to be in a good one. And I choose to be in a good mood. Oh, it's not that easy, Francie replied. Swartz says, yes, it is. Life is all about choices. Well, several years ago, Jerry's restaurant was robbed. The thieves panicked and shot him during the robbery, and he was rushed to the emergency room. He spent 18 hours on the operating table and several weeks in intensive care, but Jerry survived. Francie later went and asked him, how did you do it? How did you survive? And he said, when I was laying on the floor, I remembered I had two choices. I could choose to live or I could choose to die. I chose to live. The paramedics were encouraging, but when they wheeled me into the emergency room, I saw the looks on the faces of the doctors and the nurses, and I was scared. Because in their eyes, I read, he's not going to make it. And I knew I needed to take action. So there was this big burly nurse shouting questions at me, and she asked, are you allergic to anything? Yes, Jerry replied, and the doctors and nurses stopped working on him as they waited for his reply. Bullets, bullets, I answered, and over their laughter I yelled, I'm choosing to live. Operate on me as if I am alive and not dead. And Jerry lived thanks to the skill of the doctors, to his attitude, and to the grace of God. This is what Francie Swartz writes. I saw Jerry six months after the incident, and I asked him how he was doing. And he replied, if I was any better, I'd be twins. You see, much of life is determined not by circumstance, but by personal choice. When we decide that we are going to give thanks to the Lord no matter what. And so as we approach Thanksgiving, the question for us is, who are we in this story? Hopefully, sometimes we are like Jesus, who gives mercy, healing, and help to others, who cancels his own appointment to have mercy on someone that he sees in need. Maybe sometimes we are like the nine lepers, who got so excited over the great things that had happened to them, over the great things that God had done, that they forgot to say thank you. But hopefully... Hopefully, we are like the uncommonly thankful leper who falls at the feet of Jesus and says, thank you, thank you, thank you for all you've done. And so my prayer for you and for I, for us, that this would be, is that this would be an uncommon thanksgiving. That beyond the turkey and the football and the family and all of the other activities, that we would take some time to say thank you to God for all that he has given us, just like that uncommonly thankful leper. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we give you thanks for Jesus. 
who took time out of his schedule to have pity on a group of lepers. And so he still sees us and our needs even to this day. We are so grateful that we are on his agenda, that, that he takes his time in order to help us and heal us and give us hope. Lord, we pray that you would forgive us when we are like those nine lepers who even though they were healed, maybe in their joy, maybe in their excitement, maybe in their rush to return to normal life, they simply forgot to say thank you. Forgive us. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be more like that uncommonly thankful leper who counted his blessings and came back and fell at the feet of Jesus and said, thank you for all you've done. And so, Lord, as we approach this Thanksgiving season, we pray that it would be an uncommon Thanksgiving for us as we remember all of your many blessings and all that you've done for us. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be uncommonly thankful for all that you have done. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we come to a time of response in our service, the altar is open if you'd like to come and pray. Maybe you have sometimes forgotten to say thank you and would like to come and do it here. The altar is open. I'll be glad to pray with you if you'd like for me to do so. I'd also be glad to talk with you more if you'd like to know more about trusting in Christ as your Lord and Savior and to say thank you for all that he has done for you or to become a member of our church as we seek to make a difference for Jesus here in our community and even beyond. Our closing hymn this morning is number 664, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Would you stand as we sing together number 664? It has been good to see you in God's house today, and we hope and pray that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. I do want to remind you as you leave that there are the cards for you to pick up and to invite someone to worship next Sunday as we begin the cast of Christmas. You'll hear from a fellow named Zacchaeus about a miracle that God worked in his life and how that plays into the Christmas season. So I'm looking forward to that. Hope that you'll join us for that and to bring someone with you. And we hope and pray that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving week. And now let us close in prayer and depart with this benediction. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for your many blessings. We are grateful for how good you have been to us. We pray that you would forgive us when we forget to say thank you. We give you thanks for Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who reached out to us when we were in need. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to do the same to others. 
And so, Lord, as we enter this busy Thanksgiving week, maybe with travel, maybe with friends and family, maybe just at home, Lord, we pray that you would help us to remember how good you have been to us. And may we give you thanks for all that you've done. And it's all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior.